Today is Friday, November 15, 2024. We have more than two hours until the opening bell. So will today be interesting or unusual in terms of market behavior? I think it's possible. I mean, Fridays typically aren't the busiest days in the market. However, they got below a trend line, which is important. That is this upsloping dashed line. And since it's close to the gap left over from yesterday, the close from yesterday, that creates a zone. I'm going to call that a zone today. And they're below that. So they're at 590. They're under 591. They've been hanging out under 591 for a lot of the pre-market here. Of course, the market opens in a couple hours, so things could change. And there's an 830 data release. I believe that's important because the bulls want to be above that. They've been fighting that for a while. They could not sustain closes of significance above 600. So now they're down here. And as I've been saying for the past week or so, even before the election rally where they shot up, that there was a chance that they're going to roll over and fall down just based on timing alone. The pressure is seems to be more on the downward side. But we'll come back to this chart after the market closes to analyze any trades taken in the E-mini futures based on the levels in the SPY, how price reacts at these levels. So I'll catch you on the other side. So we got our drop. It is now 5.41 p.m. They waited till Friday to do it, but they kind of did what I thought they would do in the SPY as well as the IWM, which we might be able to look at later. So we have three levels to contend with. We'll talk through the playing by the rules trades, and then we can't look at my trades. I'll explain in a minute. I had it recorded, and then something was going on with TradeStation right about 10 o'clock. Everything locked up. Luckily, I wasn't in a trade. I'll explain in a minute. But anyway, so first of all, playing by the rules, where were they after giving the market 15 minutes to settle in? Here's the 945 candle. They closed right below 589.38, pretty close. I would just keep that level the same. I wouldn't add any kind of a adjustment to it. Market's moving pretty quickly at this point, so just sell at the market. Well, they would have been out of the money for a little bit. Somewhere in this neighborhood is your fumble threshold. Let's get it exact. Where I'm hovering here. So they were out of the money a little bit, and I was out of the money when I was in this trade. I sold probably a little higher than that level, neither here nor there. But the point is, that's the fumble threshold, but you're looking for a profit objective down here, and they gave it to you, and then some. So that's your first base hit, playing by the rules, no violation of anything. And then they're coming down to this level here. Now, I didn't take this trade, and I really wish I could show you the recording of this. It was right about here where everything kind of locked up, and so at some point... Uh, I had to just restart the computer. And it turns out there was some type of issue with TradeStation. I, I came across a down detector website. And sure enough, there was a period of an hour or so where a lot of people were complaining. I got a notification on my phone while I was in a meeting, like around 1120 or so, that they had resolved the issue. So I'm glad I wasn't in the train. But anyway, I'm just pointing this out because if I had the recording to share with you, I could show you that when price was coming down into this level, I left it alone. I just made it dotted. I just wasn't feeling it. Playing by the rules, let's just assume you took the trade. You don't know anything else. You're not looking at anything else that would give you kind of a feeling that this is probably not the destination, that they're going to go lower. So 588.18 would turn into 588.23, five cent buffer toward price. I did the math already, and you would have given back eight and three quarter points on a fumble and reversed, and they can continue to fall. So you've had at least a wash of four points or more as they continue to fall. And they found some type of you know bounce and stuff here. But this next level down at 586 would be 586.05 with your $0.05 cent buffer. And that was, would have been perfect. They came down into it. Uh, low was 586.04. So one penny took off. There's your next trade of at least a base hit of four points. And now we're talking about whether they would come back into this for a recycle trade. So here's your original level, 586. So they kind of got out of it here, right? And so you have about 20 minutes until they're coming back up into it at this point. Because you look at the time, it's 11.57, it's 12.22, so you have enough time. But I'm going to pull it down toward price, so it's now 585.95. Well, they came up one penny short here. So this is the highest, 585.94. So if you had this order in the system to trigger automatically, you would have not been filled. They pulled away. I would consider that the base hit. So when they attempted this a few more times, I would not be taking it over here. Obviously, it worked. And the time was okay. It was uh, 3.20. So, you know, right before my, my line in the sand, I don't take trades after 3.30 p.m. But we're not going to count this for a recycle trade because simply that was kind of a tell for me that maybe they weren't going to respect it. And if they got back up to it later, they might just go all the way through it. And then I'd be stuck in a short trade toward the end of the day. And I don't want to be in a losing trade toward the end of the open session. So, again, there's nothing I can show for my trades other than maybe took a screenshot a little while ago. Let's see, where is that? 
before I made this, I thought, well, I'll just take a screenshot. This was you know, 30 minutes ago or so of just my one trade. It was eight points with two contracts, $800 before commissions. I just kind of blacked out you know, my account balance and account number and things like that. But that's where I landed today. So on the daily chart, let's talk about where they found some support. This is the area I said they'd have to get down to. So they're basically at the point where they have to make a decision. So it's not too surprising that they're down here. They're still bullish because I mean they're above the 50 period moving average. And they're not going to be really in trouble until they start getting daily closes below this area or really below the 50 period moving average, wherever that happens to be. But this is support. And by the way, the IWM got back right into this zone that I talked about, I think it was yesterday, that if they fell, this is kind of a target. But they could go farther. I mean, they're not in trouble. No one's in trouble at this point. I want to point out that they uh, hit that area. They hit that zone pretty well. Let's talk about the SPY, though. So they bounce off the 20-period moving average. They closed kind of at this little breakout area. This would generally be a bounce in the upward direction. You know, if uh, unless something else unusual happens next week, I just looked. There's really nothing on the schedule that looks interesting in terms of data releases or any type of news announcement. And we could always have a black swan event of some sort. But, I mean, they could really scare people by coming down more, maybe fill this gap down here. While they're also hitting the 50 period moving average, that is around what, 577? Call it 577-ish, 576 to 577, and they could bounce from there. So what I'm saying is they could come down farther and it's not a problem, or they could bounce from where they're at. They're at an important area based on this daily chart. On the tracking log, the playing by the rules one is the first one. And so you can see, if you just read the notes here, level three was the first base hit. This was level two, which is the fumble, so L2. A fumble of eight and three quarter points plus a four point base on the reversal, just strictly playing by the rules. Could have held it for more points, but anyway, it washed out some of that. And then a base on the last level down. And after that, there was nothing. So you would have ended the day in the green slightly, no big deal. My trades were just the one trade at level three here, 589.38, and I got eight points on that trade. Maybe since we're at the end of the week, we'll go back and maybe play around with this and say, let's just look at the last week. So this week. We'll see what this week looked like playing by the rules. Not too bad. And then on my trades, there we are. These are the trades that I took, and that's pretty accurate. Well, of course, I don't always trade the same number of contracts. It really depends on how good I feel about a level. But anyway, I guess what you're more, mostly concerned about are playing by the rules because that's just more methodical and scientific. And while we're at it, why don't we talk about this month to date? Let's see, this month. There's this month so far, the last couple weeks. Might as well compare it to mine. And just for kicks and giggles, let's clear everything. Let's just see where we are where we are to date in the year 2024. So playing by the rules, we're at 163.65% annual rate of return to date through, through today. And you can look at all the averages, uh, the daily averages, averages per hour. And once again, I'll just point out here in case you haven't caught up on this yet that this average per hour, I am using the 945 point as a starting point to 3.30 p.m. If you take the total that was earned in any given day and you divide that by that amount of hours, then this is what the average hour productive time, you could say, between 9.45 and 3.30 p.m. if you were trading each of these levels uh, independently of one another. And here's the number of contracts. You know, If you're trading four contracts at each level throughout the year, this is where you would be in terms of your profit potential. In the year 2024 to date for me, 238.85% total. Uh, that's rate of return for the year. And then you can see daily averages and average per hour. This is just strictly one, you know, a certain number of contracts at each level. I, Like I've said before, I don't always trade the same number of contracts at each level. And you've seen that. It really depends on how good I feel about a level. I will trade more contracts if I feel better about it than some other levels. But that just kind of comes with doing this for a long time. So that's it for today and for the week. I hope you found some value in this. Thanks for following along and supporting the channel. I appreciate it. We'll be back on Monday with new levels and a new game plan. And I'll talk to you in the next recap video. Have a great rest of your day.